So when I look at your content, I categorize it into positivity, okay? (laughs) And the reason is because you are sharing things like uplifting words of wisdom, but then also you're sharing like amazing, like nourishing foods for the soul. And I feel like your whole content, it's like nourish yourself almost, you. you know? Were you always like this? Like, were you always a very positive person or do you feel like you kind of had to develop that part of you? Um, I would say that I think it's it's interesting you say that because I find people always ask me, how are you positive all the time? And I'm like, I'm really not. No, I, I doubt I'm anyone really is that. positive all yeah, the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, think, I think for me, it's, I always try and find a way when, as soon as I started building a community online, I recognized the responsibility and the ripple effect that my energy can have on other people. And so even if I'm having a really terrible day, I choose to squeeze out the ounce of whatever joy or whatever gratitude I have to be able to share that with other people because the alternative is me sharing my bad day and having someone else that's having a bad day and someone else that's having a bad day feel even worse. And so it's something that I've really tried to nurture in me where it's not that I'm showing a different version of myself, it's that I'm sharing different parts of myself with different people. And it's just more of a responsibility thing that I see versus Mm -hmm. it being who I am all the time. Um, And it definitely has taken some time to nurture, but I always try and squeeze a small amount of gratitude out of any day that I possibly can because there's always something to be grateful for. Like even if you're in the hardest situation, the fact that we are still living, breathing, um, and for many of us have so much more that we could be grateful for and so every day I feel a bit of a slump like that I end up just trying to at least have those moments of thought in my mind I really do believe though that it shifts our perspective because I think that when you're having a bad day and I mean everyone has a bad day right or like maybe you're in like a really shitty situation Mm -hmm. I think it's up to you to decide how long you're gonna wallow yes you know I feel like you can sit in it I I always think about it as um, I love the the uh, explanation of emotions being energy in motion. I always think about that. Whenever I'm feeling a specific emotion, I think about it as I am, I'm experiencing it right now. I have to process it and understand where it's coming from, where it's rooting from. And then I can experience it, indulge in it for a little bit. But after a specific amount of time, I'm going to have to, after processing it, let it go to allow other things in through me. And so... I do believe in the wallowing though. I'm like, look, let me give myself, let me feel bad for myself a little bit. Let me pity myself just for a little bit longer. But at some point you have to learn how you can pick yourself back up and not expect anybody else to do it for you. You have to learn those kind of self-soothing mechanisms yourself. I agree. Do you have like a time limit for how long you let yourself wallow because if I'm having like if I'm like really in the trenches and it's been like a while, I I like give myself a free day or like this is like these are your two hours to like really feel it and like of course like this is after doing the work of processing and everything I'm talking about just like let me feel sorry for myself and then it's like okay okay time to get it together yeah I'd say especially since I've grown a very small team around me I'm so mindful of how being in close proximities with someone affects everyone else's mood and so I probably give myself the evening to really and if I'm actually focusing on it it doesn't take me more than an evening to figure out what's going on where it's rooting from it may still linger on the next day in terms of my energy and my mood but not necessarily stopping me from doing things because I think you can still be really sad and be happy at the same time and you can feel really angry at something and still be able to show up and continue what you're doing because that's part and parcel of life so I'd say I've tried to give myself an evening. If it's really bad, I'll give myself a weekend. If it's on a Friday, just to like stay in bed. You know what? Staying in bed the whole day can do wonders. But then movement also is another space that I kind of release a lot of what I'm feeling through. I find movement in physical body helps you shift movement in in mind space and in your heart as well. So I try to go more towards movement than I do stagnancy when I'm feeling in that way. How did you get here? Like, how did you get to the place where you kind of realize that, you know, you have to, like, there's like a mechanism to work through things and then let it go or like come up, come to this place of self-awareness? Like, were you like this as a kid? 
No, I wasn't. I think I just got tired of myself. Like, I got tired of being the person who always thought someone was doing something wrong to me or the person who was carrying kind of weight after weight after weight and filling myself with that because then my perspective of the world was being filtered through all of that junk. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want to be I don't want to be seeing people like that. I don't want to be seeing the world in that way. I don't want to be having interactions through all of that junk that I'm allowing to stay in me. Mm -hmm. And I think it was when I started actually noticing how I was speaking to people and how I was maybe saying things but not thinking that or, or acting a certain way but feeling a different way where all of my actions, my words, and my thoughts were not aligned, which created such lack of integrity in what I was doing and who I was as a person to my friends or my family. And I was like, I don't want to be that person because everybody feels it. When you feel someone's energy is off, you feel it straight away. You meet someone for the first time, you feel it. And I remember hearing this quote, it's by one of my teachers, Radhanath Swami, and he said that when um, integrity is when your your words, your actions, and your thoughts are all in alignment. And so when people feel that integrity from you, they're able to build a deeper connection with you. When you say something to someone and all three are aligned, they can feel it go straight to their heart or they really believe it. And I was like, I want to be that. And mm-hmm. so I started working on it because of, I guess, spurred off that quote that I had had heard. It really hit me. I love that. And mm-hmm. how did you even find this quote? And I'm asking this yeah. because, you know, I think that when we're in a place mm-hmm. where like you kind of have the tools and it's like second nature to you. It's Mm -hmm. like, you know how to tap into that. But I want to give tools to the person who's wanting to make changes in their life, but maybe don't know how. Well, this is just one way that came to mind. I have my whole entire Instagram feed is curated to see the things that I want to see. And so I have, if you look at my For You page, it's quotes, 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 food, quotes, 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 food. Um, And it really is, I've created an algorithm where I see that. So I know when I'm spending time looking at things for too long, my For You page is basically a reflection of where my mind's at. And so if I'm watching a lot of gossip and watching a lot of things to do with that, my whole For You page is going to be about Bollywood stars and what they're doing and (laughs) and the people that they're seen with. Or if I'm actually looking for things that are going to bring a better version of myself out, that's what my feed is. So you said, where do I find it? I have known Radhanath Swami and been you know, reading and listening to his words for a long time. But it was when I was seeking a spiritual teacher, I was seeking spiritual wisdom. And so I went to the temple near me. I was really engrossed in trying to understand a deeper spiritual philosophy because I felt a little bit lost at that time. And Mm -hmm. so through that, I found him. But when I think about where I found other words that have really uplifted me, it's through that, seeking what you want to feel in you and what you want to give to other people and so if I am constantly digesting gossip and and with my friends and online and in the reality tv that I'm watching then that's all I'm going to pour out because that's literally what I'm absorbing through me constantly and so I've I've noticed my I've, I've really started to notice what I am desiring externally I have to shift that to be able to desire different things internally. And it's a trigger for me when I notice myself being indulgent in gossip or in things that are lowering my like lowering my desires to Mm -hmm. someone that I don't want them to be. It really does though, (laughs) because I'm the same way as you. Mm -hmm. I feel like everything around me is very curated and Mm -hmm. people make fun of me because even in terms of like what I watch, it has to be at like a certain energy level because I don't want to leave watching something and feel drained of my energy, you know? And we don't we don't notice how much those things stimulate us or desensitize us. Yes. Every single thing that goes in through every sense of us, from our mouth with what we're eating, through to what we're saying, the things that we're listening to, the things that the pollution that we're breathing in, every single thing has the ability to affect how we are then perceiving the world and how we are receiving things from other people. Yeah. And so I remember I think ten years was it ten years ago? Yeah, ten years ago I decided I wanted to dive really deep into my spiritual practices which for me meant someone recommended going to the temple that was close to me and doing the the early meditation prayers with them for like a week and Mm -hmm. it was a 4 a.m ritual so i'd have to wake up at 4 a.m before work get there for 4 30 and i spend my morning there 
And I was noticing that what was stopping me from when I woke up to actually get out the door was all the horror movies that I had seen of coming out of my door to my car and all the things that could happen between the two places. And I was like, how am I stopping all these impressions that have been left in my mind from such a young age are stopping me from coming out of the door to my car that's right here. Stopping me from going to this place that I really want to go to, but because of the fear that has been internalized through that. And so I stopped watching horror movies. I stopped watching anything scary, anything that could stop me from wanting to go into the world in real life. And it has made such a difference. And that's just fear, right? And then there's every other emotion that we feel. So feed your emotions. Every emotion that you feed is going to be strongest in you. And so I want to feed the happy emotions as much as I possibly can. I'm completely with you. Like, I'm telling you, people, like, my husband will laugh at me because my favorite movie is Kung Fu Panda, okay? And, like, it's just, like, I want to feel so happy when I come out of it, you know? And he's like, Sif, like, how's that your favorite movie? I'm like, no, like, look at him. It makes me feel happy. Yeah. And so I'm like, listen, our days are chaotic already. It's, it's, there's this world, okay? There's things going on and around me that I just can't control. What I can control, I'm going to make it good. Yes, (laughs) exactly. No, I, I, I fully believe that. My friends have horror nights. Honestly, Halloween is my, sorry guys, but it's my worst time of year. I really dislike it. (laughs) I don't like driving by being scared by skeletons. I don't like seeing just scary faces everywhere. It's really not an enjoyable time for me. No, I like, I like, (laughs) I make Halloween like a very like, like cozy time yes. you know that's Autumn. what I, yes well, exactly soups. like I watched Harry Potter last night that was very love. comforting okay yes you know? I love Harry I'm Potter. like this is spooky yes exactly <laughs> or maybe like Casper Casper yes. the friendly ghost oh amazing gosh, that's literally on my watch list <laughs> yeah. for this. they have it on uh on Netflix if anyone's yeah. wondering the- <laughs> oh I saw that recently my friends don't even invite me now if they're watching anything to do with horror or they want to go watch oh my gosh the new exorcist film I was like oh I went to the movies to watch something really wonderful I can't remember what it was but it was a, I think maybe it was Mission Impossible but for some reason they decided to have the audacity to put it in one of the trailers that trailer was it felt like it was five hours long. It showed every single horrible part of the movie. I was sitting there with my hands over my eyes like, I cannot believe they're making me go through this without L- my choice. Literally? Oh my God. I have to send this to my <laughs> husband, what you just said. Please. Because I, over the weekend, my best friend was visiting and I literally went on a tangent about this exactly. I was like, how dare they put up these like scary posters all around the street? That's all I was talking like, about after the movie. Literally, I'm like, I feel so like violated. Yes. I'm like, I never consented to this. I'm very sensitive to like these things that I watch. Like, absolutely not. The Exorcist no. is like horrific. And it desensitizes people, you know? Actually, if you think about the, if we go further than the fact that it's just scary, What it unfortunately does is when you're watching violence, it breeds violence. And when you're watching things which are sexually exploitative to women or abusive to whatever it is that we're watching, it is normalizing it in such a horrific way that we don't even realize that we are watching something that is so horrific. And we think that it is an escape, but actually what's scariest about it is that it's happening in reality and so I think about that with video games with every with everything that we watch it's just it it will reflect in our culture and society um because it reflects in our mind well even I I was reading something about this I don't even remember where the source was but it was like watching really fucked up dating reality tv shows it's like you can start to like normalize things which you shouldn't normalize you know like I think that people start to think that like these bizarre behaviors within a relationship and like that's what they think is like okay or like attracting that sort of drama it's like I don't want that in my life no (laughs) but but you're right it does it it, I mean and we all are suckers for watching it I randomly (laughs) started started watching Love Island and I was like why is this so bad but also (laughs) so good and then I, then my friends were like, well, if you watch that, watch Love is Blind. I watched a series of Love is Blind. And I was like, I can I cannot, but I still do. Like, why? Why I, am I doing this? So I watched the first, <laughs> my husband likes reality TV every yeah, now and then, so he'll put too. it on. And I'm like, Nish, like I joke about myself. I'm like, listen, I don't think I have enough brain cells to spare. Like, yeah. I, I just, I feel like I can't do it. Like, well, It's I'll almost a TV them. I watch where I don't want to use brain cells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. <laughs> um, but no, it is. It's it's so important what you allow through 
into any part of yourself like see yourself as a sacred vessel and something which has the ability to change so many lives i went to a memorial yesterday Mm -hmm. and it was so spectacular because it fueled me to want to become the type of person who doesn't just show up in front of people and doesn't just somewhat exist in the world but impacts not in a, in a celebrity way or in any kind of way, but who impacts every single person that they've been around to the point where they feel their life has significantly changed because of this small interaction they've had with that person. And I was like, how beautiful to do that. But to be able to show up in that way, you have to treat yourself in a way that is sacred so you can spread sacredness to other people. I love that. That's um, really beautiful. And it was just amazing. It's mm-hmm. incredible. I, you know, they asked, someone asked a question at the memorial yesterday. Um, if you were to leave the world tomorrow, do you feel like you've done enough? And I was like, no, I really don't. Not even to the people closest to me, let alone with other people that exist beyond my immediate circle. Mm -hmm. And so I think to honor that, you have to honor who you are and, and nurture the person you want to become. I love that. Do you have any mindfulness practices? Um, I do. I, well, my morning ritual is something that is probably my favorite thing to stick to because I really notice how much it impacts the rest of my day I've always been a morning person it's not something that comes difficult to me you know everyone's like wow you wake up so early I'm like that's actually more natural to me than anything else is and um so my morning practice involves meditation um it has done for about 10 years now since I went to that temple and I spent time doing that it transformed my whole being and what I realized is no matter what changes in my life if I have a by the way by meditation practice I mean a stillness practice where I am with myself reflecting on what my mind is telling me reflecting on what my body needs and wants in that moment I have a mantra meditation practice but I think just having a reflective practice in itself is is enough. Um, And then work your way up if you can to other types of meditation. But that morning time is really important. And I think that for me has been my sacred space to nurture that part of me. And when I notice that change, I notice a shift in who I am. How long do you meditate for? So I... This I I meditate for at least an hour to an hour, 15 minutes in the morning. Wow. Um, But that's 10 years down the line. So I built it up over a long period of time. It wasn't something I just dove into, but I noticed that, you know, I think about how much time I spend doing other things during the day. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was thinking about that with my workouts as well. Sometimes you're like, oh wow, someone walked for two hours, but that's two hours of movement and 22 hours of stagnancy. So actually the two hours feels like an immense amount of time to go for a walk, but it's really not because we're stagnant for, for those 20 hours. And so in the same way, when I think about the reflective practice of the meditation, that is the only hour, hour and a half of stillness that we get. Because yes, sleep is included, but you're not consciously digging in Mm -hmm. your own mind. Mm -hmm. Whereas that one hour of reflective practice versus everything that we, you know, take in throughout the day, that doesn't seem like much at all, Mm -hmm. if you think about it in that way. So I built it up because I felt like I needed it. And when I was lacking it, or whenever I do find myself lacking it, my emotions are all all over the place. I am probably not as nice as I should be to people around me. I'm snappier. Um, It just brings out, I hope, the better version of myself, which I want to kind of maintain. So (laughs) when you started, was it like a shorter period of time? Oh, yeah, I would commit to. So I I use beads when I'm meditating Mm -hmm. because I mean, I try to engage as much, just as we do when we're watching movies now. It's like they have 3D, they have surround sound. Sometimes they have like, you know, when you go to Universal Studios, they have these effects where there's blowing of the wind and whatever. In the same way, when you're meditating, ideally engaging all your senses helps you to focus. And so I have beads in my hand because we're so used to being on our phone, whereas the beads will connect me back to my practice. Um, I use sound meditation, so I'll do mantra meditation, so I'll speak, so that helps engage my mind, the sound vibrations. Um, I'll light incense or a candle that helps my smell sense where I'm like, oh, this is the smell that is meant to be for a mindful practice Mm now. And visually, I'll either, I have an altar that I sit in front of and have my own kind of DTs and, you know, meditative pictures that I like, but also going outside in nature really helps me. So I try to engage as many of my senses as possible in the practice. So I have beads and I I use them and I have a specific amount that I commit to um, 
to go round on the beads there's 108 beads on it and so when I first started off I do one round of it and that would take like 10 minutes and then so now I've built up to the amount that I am doing now and as, as years went on I decided to commit to myself and um, for me to God um, to do a little bit extra every single day. I love what you say about, you know, when you start your day with this practice, it allows you to show up as a better, Mm. kinder, like, I guess, like more elevated version of yourself, because it's true. Like, Mm. I don't have a meditation practice, but I do ground myself in the morning and I do that through journaling. And there are days that I meditate. I'm just not as regular with it as I would like to be. Although I will say in October, I have been meditating every day this month. Yay, that's amazing. (laughs) But I do feel like it allows you to be um, proactive before you're becoming reactive. Yes, so true. And I think it, um, you said, I always used to, call it my my higher self but actually it's just connecting back to our true self in my mind like I'm like I always think oh is it just a version of me that I can show up as if I do this this and this but no it's what it's actually doing is it's cleansing us like it is clearing all that gunk that we have built up and it's allowing us to truly connect to who we are to our deep roots Mm -hmm. and so naturally it's not that it's making us better it's making us into our our original self of who we always want to be and always have been but things just get in the way of that the filters that come upon us but yeah I I do find that I have so many ebbs and flows with my practice I will show up and I will be distracted I'll be on my phone I'll be you know trying to watch whatever's happening outside and I will be sitting for a whole hour and notice that I really wasn't in meditation but what I have found is just showing up Mm -hmm. because showing yourself and committing to yourself and being consistent it's something I found really difficult in a lot of parts of my life. But to commit to something and tell yourself, I'm going to do this even if I don't want to. And I'm going to show up even when I don't want to. And even if I've dropped off for a month, I'm not going to shame myself. I'm not going to tell myself that I don't deserve the practice or convince myself that I shouldn't go back to it. Whatever, Whenever I get the opportunity to, I'm going to keep going back and keep going back. And I think that commitment to yourself allows you to it's almost like committing to a partner right like you keep keeping on showing up for yourself allows a deeper relationship with yourself regardless of whether you failed once or failed twice or failed three times you're still going back to trying to connect back again love that um Um, how did you get interested in food and the nutrition piece (laughs) i've been a well coming from an indian family i've been a foodie from the moment i was in my mom's belly uh probably lifetimes before that too and one, my mom is, an, I mean, everyone feels their mom is an incredible cook. My mom is such an incredible cook. She worked full time. She would make sure I had green juice in the morning when it was like not even cool to have green juice. She'd be making carrot juices and juices in the morning before work. And she'd get my vitamins out for me in the morning. And then she'd be doing her meditation in the morning or before she went to work full time, then came home and cooked us fresh meals every single night. Wow. Um, I can barely get up in the morning and like make my own, remember to take my own vitamins, let alone do all of those things that she's she did for me. And she would make food interesting, but still healthy. And I think the version of Indian food that people now see on a day-to-day basis is probably not the traditional healthy Indian food that we're used to. Mm -hmm. Um, But she used to make cuisines feel so exciting. I was vegetarian from when I was born. But we never felt like we were missing out on anything. And there were different cuisines always. It was it was just beautiful what she did. Mm-hmm. And so I learned a lot through the way that she created. Her love language was food. If someone was coming over, there was never one dish. It could never be one dish. It had to be a dish with three side dishes, two desserts, and <laughs> everything else in between. So I felt like her way of loving and service was through food Mm -hmm. and I think I took that on a lot so whenever I was thinking about giving to people it would be let me make a cake or let me make something for people when they come and it really made me appreciate that gesture because there's one thing about buying people things but when you can create something with your hands whether it's art whether it's you know I don't know something knitted for someone or food it's your ability to pour yourself into something that they're able to hopefully appreciate or get nourished by. And I um, 
so it was my mom and then I did my nutrition degree. My mom recommended I did that. I wanted to be a doctor, honestly, as most Indians really? do. Really? Well, I wanted to be a pediatric doctor. I was really obsessed with, with doing something with children. I can honestly see that too. Yeah, I really <laughs> wanted to. I was like, but honestly, I didn't have the grades or the brains. Um, <laughs> so I didn't get the grades for that. So I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to do now. My mom was like, I've heard about this degree, nutrition. The government's paying for it right now. So why don't you do that? I was like, sure, why not? I had no idea what it was going to be. <laughs> Um, but my mom said it and I believe my mom really knew me better than I did at that age and so I went for it and learned so much more about you know the practicalities of food of what food consists of the the intricacies of it but from a biological and physiological way but after I did that I did my dietetics degree to work in a hospital so I'm a dietitian and nutritionist wow so I, I learned, didn't know that that's yeah, incredible thank you um, I learned a lot through that but I still felt like I was missing something because I was working in a hospital and I had to recommend these things that I wouldn't necessarily take myself or I wouldn't want to recommend that people did supplements and things when actually what I wanted to be teaching people was how can we heal our bodies through food that we eat through spices that I learned were so good for you growing up and so I moved to New York for um, my husband's work and there I couldn't actually use my degree at all because I was in a different country and I didn't have a work visa so I decided to throw myself back into study and I learned about Ayurveda and that was it for me. I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, this is what I want to share with people. How every single thing in nature has the ability to heal or harm our body, but we have to understand it and understand ourselves to know our relationship with it. And that is where my passion definitely lies. And that's why I just love creating food with spices and all the things that the body can be healed by. I love that you're able to kind of like merge the two worlds yeah. because I think like there is something to be said about the science behind yes. like, you know, the nutrition, like really understanding Definitely. like the biological aspects mm -hmm. of the body, but then like blending it with this like really ancient healing practice that's been there for centuries. Yeah. Like Ayurveda is like, I mean, it's, it's like sacred, you know? It is. It's, I mean, the oldest health science to exist. And I just want to confirm when I was saying supplements, I don't know whether you guys call it something different here, but it was um, the drinks that have like all the nutrition. I know what you're. Yeah, I know so, what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean like vitamins and stuff. It was just it was a diff. It was almost instead of having an avocado milkshake, have this because you're underweight. Or instead of having this, have this. And I just think that instead of educating people, we were almost um, disarming them from being able to understand themselves and what they need. So instead, we're like do this or do that. But actually, education is where we have to try and get people to because then they're able to heal themselves versus always coming to somebody else to help treat them. Well, I also love that you say this because I remember even in like, you know, like for me, it was just like the base level of I don't know what to make for myself. Yeah. And I remember when I was in college, like I had no, no, not a clue how to nourish myself yeah. right and like even when when it comes to the education i just couldn't i didn't even know that healthy start. food could taste good where to start like yeah. i had to teach myself all of this mm -hmm. you know and so it's even just that that like food is it, it can either be your medicine or your poison yes, you know what i mean definitely. and like knowing how to navigate it it's so important it is i think um we become so disconnected to the food that we eat to the point where, you know, when you ask a child where they think that the food on their plate comes from, they often have no idea. No idea. Um, and I think that's really the root of a lot of disease in the world right now, whether it's minor health conditions to major health conditions, I think disconnected from nature and what you're actually eating and the process of creating the food yourself, the oils that you're using, really we eat out so much now. And there's very, I actually think that what's the most worrying is that we're taking so much of what we eat to other people. Like not only are we giving our power of our health away, we're also giving the power of our food away to other people. And we're not seeing it as a sacred ritual of nourishing our body. By the way, to be able to do every single thing that you want to do in this world, to be able to wake up and work out, to be able to go to work, to be able to function properly when you're in meetings, all of that is affected by the food you're eating and nourishing your body with. And so it blows my mind that we actually have created such a mindless relationship with food right now when in actuality, if we connected back to it, it would, it would enhance every single part of our life. Um, and I think that involves stripping everything back to 
not the process stuff, not the stuff that looks really exciting and is packaged up in certain ways, but let's go back to what nature just gives us. And I think if we all did 80% of that and 20% of the ice creams and the crisps and the chips and chocolates and whatever, that balance is fine. It's not all or nothing. I agree. But it's quantity and the quality that makes such a difference. Like I like I honestly I couldn't agree more. And I think like even just for my own health journey, you know, as I started to learn how to nourish myself and that like healthy food can be absolutely delicious. Yes. It's 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 an empowering feeling, you it know? Is. It is. And uh, you know, I only studied I would say I'm at the beginning of my Ayurveda studies. I would say I'm still such a basic student in it. But I think even in my book, I've, I've spoken about a lot of Ayurvedic um, rituals and practices, even around food. The recipes aren't necessarily Ayurvedic strict recipes. Mm-hmm. But I every time I was you know, battling between am I watering down the philosophy too much? I thought, but people don't even know the basics. And so for me, the basics have trans- transformed my life so much. The, the advanced level, only advanced people are going to be able to do it. It's so difficult to actually adhere to a hundred percent living in a strict diet and eating no eating ice cream and knowing whatever it is but i think even if you do that small percentage change it can change the trajectory of your health completely yeah i couldn't agree more it doesn't have to be all or nothing totally can you share a few of your favorite tips for our listeners like yeah let me think um my favorite tip so my number one tip that is the essence of my book is increase the amount of spices in your food spices are literally medicine in a box my spice box is my medicine box i remember growing up and my mom if i had a cold or cough she would not go to a paracetamol or an advil here she would get turmeric out she would get ajwain out to boil it in water and make me drink that or you know if i had a temperature there were just so many spices that could be used in so many different ways and when i was younger i took it as nothing it was just mm-hmm. natural to me and I grew up grow up now and I'm doing the same thing I, I very rarely if ever use medicine now I use my spices even if by the way I probably shouldn't say this but when I had a dental infection I use clove oil by the way don't do that if you <laughs> don't know how to use it but you know everyone was like no you have to take antibiotics and I was like well actually there are lots of antiseptic antibiotic properties in cloves and in clove oil I wanted to see mm-hmm. because that's something which you can almost feel like is impossible to get over without antibiotics but I did and and it just I've been experimenting with the healing properties of spices and so I would say number one expand your spice cupboard every single week or every single month whatever you can you know manage pick a new spice to experiment with see how it feels in your body how it does in your food really start to connect with that and I think that will be amazing for you and then Another thing I would recommend is learning your cues of hunger. It's so important. In Ayurveda, it talks about eating until you are three quarters satisfied, not full. So what that means is we usually start, we usually think that we have to stop eating when we get that, oh, I'm so full now, I'm done, I just can't eat anymore. But actually there's something about about eating and understanding your cues of I'm satisfied, not full. And so, you know, Uh, experiment with that too when you feel like I've actually eaten enough to nourish my body versus overloaded my body and my stomach to the point where I'm feeling lethargic and so a, a great way to understand that is after I'm eating am I feeling tired energy less and feel like I want to go to sleep or heavy or am I feeling energized and light and still feel like I can move and do everything I need to do Mm -hmm. and so I would say those two separations can help guide you of whether you've eaten too much or you've eaten the right amount um I've got so many more but should I keep going (laughs) yeah give me give us one more okay I'll give you one more um one thing I noticed when I came to America especially because obviously it's a warmer country uh, well LA is that people drink a lot of cold water and cold beverages Mm mm-hmm And of course, like when it's hot summer, you want to drink something cool, that's fine. But usually when your digestion isn't that great, if you're noticing your digestion isn't great, which a lot of people do, swapping from having iced beverages to having hot water or room temperature will completely change your gut. I've had so many people tell me this has worked 
miracles for them. That simple change and shift of drinking hot teas, hot water after your meals, or rather than having cold beverages with what you're eating. I honestly, I've never been able to enjoy cold water. Yeah. I'm like, I just like, how am I supposed to drink the quantity that I need if it's so cold? cold I, know. Like, I can't do it. I know. But I feel like it's, you know, iced coffees, iced teas. Um, I mean, I have a iced tea, I have a cold, like ready to drink beverage that, you know, I sell as well. And I love drinking it now and then. But again, I think it's about balance. Mm-hmm. You know, when you should be drinking it and how you should be drinking it. Um, I always love starting my day off with hot water and I use three spices coriander cumin and fennel seeds it's like really yes like fresh coriander no uh sorry dried so coriander seeds fennel Uh seeds and cumin seeds the it's called ccf and it is i guess the queen of spice blends in ayurveda really yes it is amazing you boil your water in it your hot water you drink that as your tea it helps do you strain it then? yeah you can strain it uh-huh. i sometimes like chewing on the fennel seeds <laughs> but yeah I, I would recommend straining it equal parts of all three so you can make a big batch of it uh-huh. um but drinking that one it helps to purify the blood cleanse your digestive system stoke your digestion because it's been resting for whatever eight seven or eight hours um helps to release the toxins that have you know built up overnight there's just so many benefits to it and also helps to re kind of balance your stomach fluids and acidity and everything so wow i did not know that yeah it's a great blend that's really fascinating great. okay i'm gonna try that yeah try it please it's, <laughs> it's wonderful it actually tastes really nice okay. unless you're someone who um <laughs> with a lot of people I, I don't know whether you've heard when people eat coriander sometimes or cilantro they think it tastes like soap. soapy i'm like this is like such a tragedy it for makes you me so sad anybody who has soapy cilantro i'm <laughs> really sorry i'm so sorry for you <laughs> I, I really am too i'm like yeah. what, what do you mean it's like one of the best things ever i know i put it on everything, everything. I I know, me too. Like, cilantro <laughs> is my favorite thing. Yeah. Do you do coffee as well or no? I never grew up drinking coffee. Mm-hmm. My parents grew up drinking masala chai. They mm-hmm. grew up drinking tea. But, um, yeah, I never really grew up drinking coffee at all. And I still... Okay, my friends make fun of me because... Radhi on holiday drinks coffee, like loves a coffee, which I do. <laughs> I love getting an iced coffee and I'll like savor that one coffee that I have a day, but it's not in my daily practice at all. I love, a, I have a, if I go out and about, I might get a matcha latte or, mm-hmm. or maybe get an iced coffee if it's really hot outside, but no, it's not in my daily, it's not in my cupboards. So in the morning you wake up and that's like, the, I the, have my current cumin and fennel The tea. CCF. Yes, yes. <laughs> CCF too, okay. I probably only really get my caffeine hit from chocolate really yeah good for you yeah honestly no i i really understand the need for it and i think sometimes my go-to is sugar Mm -hmm. instead of having coffee Mm -hmm. that's usually my kind of crutch for when i'm feeling any low energy yeah but i do find as soon as i start the habit of having something with caffeine it just hooks you on your body almost doesn't know how to create the same energy that you need when you're having coffee. And I and I say this to a lot to people that if your body is needing something to give you energy, there's something that that needs to be fixed biologically or hormonally that needs to get checked because you shouldn't need to rely on coffee to make it through the day. And so adju- it's a sign that adjustments need to be made. Well, I, I like I totally agree with mm. you because there's times where, you know, I, I'll feel like very <clears throat> reliant or yeah. like I'll start to feel a slump at like in the in the afternoon yeah. and if I need that second coffee, I'm like, okay, like what is going on here? Yeah. Like there's something happening and like it could be because I'm just like too burnt out or it's mm-hmm. just been too tough tough on like when it comes to work or I've not been sleeping enough totally. you know and so you're totally right I think like I think it can be used in like a really good way yeah. but I think if you're using it as a band-aid solution to just like overall fatigue that's I think a problem definitely and I think I I think about this with everything from sugar to carbohydrates to whenever I end up feeling either controlled by or that I feel I am finding difficult to give up that's a sign to me that there's just adjustments that's a trigger warning to me in my body that something needs to change because I was doing that after my um, lunchtime I would find a slump where I was just wanting to have sugar like just have so much sugar in my diet that Mm -hmm. was able to keep me going Mm -hmm. and then I I would just every time I feel like that I do a check of my nutrient levels of vitamin d and things like that because I I find that affects my necessity for those so much and like after this I'm going to get my vitamin D shot because I'm so low in vitamin D and I'm feeling it yeah and I'm craving sugar all the time because of it just to boost my energy levels up 
that's I mean yeah I mean, you're you're totally right yeah. like I feel like getting blood work done and like understanding like what yeah. is going on I think it like teaches you a lot totally <laughs> okay so I want to move in to audience questions because okay. we have a couple Amazing. um someone asked about your kitchery reset oh yeah okay okay um tell so- me more because I don't know I don't know what she's talking <laughs> I know what kitchery is I yes. didn't know you were doing a reset but tell me more no so um I always recommend, you know, there are so many cleansers out there and a lot of them involve not eating. (laughs) Whereas in Ayurveda, they recommend having a mono, is it monotone or mono? It's a mono something, a mono diet where you're basically eating the same thing for breakfast, lunch and dinner, um, allowing your gut to know what's coming, allowing it to rest, but still replenishing and nourishing your body at the same time. Kitchri is a blend of rice and lentils and you can add some soothing vegetables and spices like soft gentle spices into them and in you can do that either for a one day full cleanse you can do a three day you can do a five day and it just really helps to reset it helps to reset your gut it helps to allow it to rest and also if your digestion is quite weak it can allow your digestion to kind of again reset so I do that I do that at least once or twice a year where I'll just have that mono diet I will either in the morning have kitchen or just have the hot water with the spices sometimes I'll add in poached apples or stewed apples mm-hmm. because that's meant to be with cinnamon which really helps to regulate your blood sugar levels in the morning and then I'll just have kitchen for lunch and dinner and it tastes really good honestly I love a kitchen it's usually the food you're given when you're ill in India yes yeah, literally exactly. like anytime I've had food poisoning as a kid yes. or like even not even as a kid like <laughs> even I went home um in December to see my parents and I got like so sick one day like I I can't even tell you I was so sick I hadn't eaten anything weird but I I don't know like maybe I was like tired or something the next day immediately Kitchery. yeah and I was like this is so comforting so comforting it's so comforting and you don't have to feel hungry when you're trying to you know save your gut when you're trying to do something like that actually that could harm it more than heal it and so having um kitchen is a great way you could do the same with soups if you wanted to anything cooked and with a few gentle spices is a great way to do that love that okay actually i know we're in audience questions but i actually have a question yeah, i can be the audience <laughs> what are your like three favorite recipes from your cookbook do you have oh it's like i know I it's saying i'm like it's like asking me to pick a favorite child I know, that i don't I know. have um <laughs> or like three that people can start with not yes, no favorites okay. <laughs> um three that people can start with so i'd say Okay, I'm going to pick categories, okay? Okay, let's okay, do I'm going it. To pick yes, categories. yes, yes, okay, done. So I have a lot of one-pot meals in there. So I find if you're struggling, if you don't really know how to, where to start with cooking, one-pot meals are way less scary, where you're throwing everything into one pot, it's cooking, and I've really thought about balance of health and taste in every single dish. And so there is a great balance of, for example, I have a, a Mexican one pot rice, but that's got vegetables, it's got your protein from beans, and it's got uh, your rice for your carbohydrates. And so I have a lot of one pot rice, vegetable, um, protein dishes in there. So start with that. And then I have so many great pastas, which um, I've got a roasted red pepper and tahini, um, like spicy taglatelli recipe. Oh, that is so one good. of my favorites. It's my go-to when people are coming over. It's really indulgent, but still actually has a lot of vegetables snuck into the pasta sauce and then I've got some good cheeky desserts in there but like cheeky but still you could have every day that doesn't feel Wait, like you're like indulging. what give me one okay, example so one, of, one of them that I've done it's uh you basically core out an apple and then you stuff it with this streusel topping it's almond flour oats you oh, can add some dark amazing. chocolate pieces into it you bake it and then you can have it with if you want you can have it with like yogurt you know low fat yogurt if you want to or you can have it with ice cream so you can pick and choose if you how indulgent you want to get <laughs> okay that sounds amazing it's so good. oh my god like i i want to make like a little streusel situation yeah. i feel like Love we're in the weather for this time of year oh, good. I know. okay um next question yeah this was actually a very popular question. How did you and Jay find each other? Because you both seem like very positive, good people. Um, we found each other because I guess it was similar interests. You could say he was actually teaching as a monk when I first came into contact with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just was obsessed with going to his classes and learning more because he was so young and he was sharing this philosophy that I'd never really invested time to you know hear about 
and at the same time was someone who had studied and done all these things but given it all up for understanding himself and spirituality so I actually met him in that capacity before we started dating um but then he stopped being a monk um he left he left the temple in that way and we st- I was friends with his sister and so we started speaking organically and it was just I had a very clear idea of what I wanted in my life at that point when I was thinking about a partner and it was someone that I can that our deepest connection was through spirituality and everything else was secondary to it and so I think we both had that desire where God and our spiritual practices were in the center and everything else would kind of yeah that's be really beautiful it. it was yeah it was really nice and and it still continues to be that I think we always come back to that even if our hobbies change and our likes and dislikes externally change we both know our deepest connection is through is through that and we can always find our ways kind of back to each other through that i love that um okay last question that we have time for um what are your tips for someone who's wanting to be more positive and like look on the at the bright side of things um curation of your life like we spoke about really take inventory uh, because it's and I'm going to say this and it's not taking the blame away from you but it's not you it's everything that's surrounding you and you have the ability to control that most of the time there are some things you can't control Mm -hmm. if you may have negative parents in your life you may have negative work colleagues in your life those are the things you can't control but take inventory of the things that you are able to control, like your Instagram feed. And I keep saying that because we spend a lot more time on Instagram than we realize scrolling. Um, your friends, what are the conversations that you're having? Uh, what are the books you're reading? What are the TV shows you're watching? Um, what is the music that you're listening to? And see, write every piece of that down, everything from morning to evening that you absorb, what is the food that you are eating? And then see if it is a reflection of how you are feeling. And if it is, one by one, go through and see how you can adapt and change that. I have made a point with my friends that I will not gossip about people or make people the the focus point of our conversation. And that has changed our relationship, but it's also changed what I end up hearing and what I end up taking in. And so I'd say take inventory of your life and then start changing small things one by one. And I don't want to guarantee, but I can guarantee for myself that made the biggest difference. I love that. That's that's a very, very solid tip. (laughs) Great. Um, Tell everyone where they can find you. Tell everyone where they can shop your cookbook. Tell us everything. Okay, so I'm Radhi Devlukia on Instagram. And my book is called Joyful. It's Joyful. It's www.joyfulbook.com. It's coming out in late February. um, And also my podcast is out. Um, It's called A Really Good Cry. And it's by me, Radhi. (laughs) Thank you so much for being here. This was so fun. Thank you. Thank you so much.